Dan Dixie. It is July 24th, 2018. I'm here with Jimmy Davenport, uh, nicknamed Daffy. So uh, why don't we start with the nickname Daffy? Could you tell us how you got the nickname? Well, for, for 300 years, my last name is Davenport. The family nickname's been Davy, right? But one day in junior high, actually, after school, there was kind of a put-up fight between me and uh, this, this football player that, that we actually liked each other, but we still had to have this fight for some reason. And uh, uh, we didn't want to fight. We were pushing each other around, but he tripped and he fell on top of me. And I saw stars and it made me kind of mad all of a sudden. So I reached around and slugged him in the stomach, but actually I slugged him in the solar plexus, which is a thing that I had just learned about the day before, and it took his breath away, and he started gasping like he was going to die, so I crawled out from underneath him, and, I'm, and he's gasping, and I'm saying, oh my God, he's really going to be pissed when he gets up, I better get out of here, he's going to kill me, but, uh, so I started sneaking a retreat and but by the time he finally sat up and got his wind all he could do was he says you're not Davy you're Daffy <laughs> so the next time I came to school the next day I wasn't Davy anymore I was Daffy so that's how it came <laughs> excellent so, and uh, you you grew up in Marblehead were you born in Marblehead no no I'm, I'm I was born in Boston I lived in Nahant and uh, I went to school there and uh, I came to Marblehead in the fourth grade because um, uh, the next grade in, in the hunt, I was going to have to go to Lynn schools and one of my teachers has told my parents, this kid, he's not stupid, you know. If, if, if I was you, uh, Lynn schools aren't going to do him any good. I, if I was you, I'd try to move to Marblehead. They got the best school system around, right? Yeah, so... My parents contrived to do that. My dad was working uh, at GE anyways. So, it was, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you moved to Marblehead in fourth grade. Fourth grade, yeah, uh, yeah. I know you graduated while well, you were in school with my, my brother. I know you graduated yeah. in 66. Yeah. Found your, found your yearbook photo at the uh, library. Right. I'll, I'll show that. Ah, um, come on. Now, how long, <laughs> I, I guess everybody, well, the beard, how long have you had the beard? Did you create out of high school because you didn't have it in high school but well I did have it in high school but it but it grew white you know you couldn't see it from the front but every once in a while some teacher would see me in profile and send me home go home don't come back to your shave you were, were allowed to have beards <laughs> nah before. nothing oh. like that yeah oh. different times you know now you um I, I remember when I see you around town you're always carrying carrying oars and down in this area walking down State Street You've been boating all, all your life, big into to boats. What's your, what's your boating history? My boating history, yeah. Uh, uh, my next door neighbor across the, across the street gave me, a, gave me a nice little skiff when I, that wouldn't float when I was a kid, and I liked it, and you know, I learned lobstering and stuff, did some of that. And I've always had a dory in particular. I had a really big one with an outboard well. It was 25 feet long, and it used to surf real good. So every storm, people start knocking on my door, going, "Are you going out?" We go out. We go out and go around, go out to Halfway Rock, uh, because the surf always set up right back to the harbor from there. Yeah. And it was pretty scary, but it was good, clean fun. Ah, nice. And, and the door you have now, which I know you just launched it, we what, two, two, two <laughs> weeks ago. Do, finally, yeah, we drafted finally you. Got, yeah, <laughs> finally got it in the, in the water. Well, I wanted to go to take pictures, so I kind of volunteered, but didn't do much work with that camera camera on my on my neck. But uh, and what's that? You've had, how long have you had the your current dory, and what what is that? I know people were kind of oh, asking. It's, I had a I had I had an old. Uh, it's a gunning dory. It's a local kind of a dory double-ended a bow on each end it's made for duck hunting I bought one an old one from Link Cox quite a few years ago and it finally went to rot so uh, and I had this cat boat I sold it to a uh, this, this old cat boat I sold it to a boat builder up at Red Spawn Thad Danielson 
worked with, and part of the deal was he had to build me a new boat, a new gunning dory. So that's the one I have now. It's very pretty and works real well, and it's a tribute to Thad. Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you ever work at a boat yacht, or just did your own? It seems like you're always working on working on the boats. Did you uh, ever ever work on them professionally, or just uh, oh. take care of your own? No. Your when own? I was a kid, I got hired to refasten a lobster boat over in Beverly, so I learned on the fly a lot there, and everything, you know, and things like that. But no, I. I never really, I built a couple of boats, uh, including another little cat boat. Fenwick Williams used to go past this friend of mine's cabinet shop. I'd be in there helping him, cabinet maker. Uh, and we became friends with this old time boat designer and went to, he had us over his house for lunch. He had this little square model of a square cat boat on his table. and. Uh, it was intriguing. He says, well, it's a, it's a beach cruiser. You sail it along the beach uh, just far enough so they can't hit you with rocks and, and, and uh, close enough in so you can't get into trouble and you can sleep in it. It, it intrigued us. It was a little yawl, but it was basically square and only about 10 feet long. And so he said, well, you can see it better in this. He brought in a bigger model, Fenwick Williams can't see three inches in front of his face, but he's a famous yacht designer and, and draftsman. Uh, and, uh, and this is one of his designs. And then finally, he brought us down the cellar, and it turns out he's just, he was just a short little guy. He'd built one about six or seven feet long in the cellar, he's for, just for himself. <laughs> he says, yeah, one really got built a while back. Uh, Concordia Yacht Company built built one as a thank you for me and uh, it's still around so we went to see that one and he talked us into building a pair of them wow. and they were the funniest things you ever saw they had lee boards and, and you could sleep in them and mm -hmm. holy smokes what yeah. a scheme yeah yeah they're more fun than a barrel of monkeys <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that you have a mooring um off off the boston yacht club yeah prime territory how long have you had that one? Oh, since I made peace with Augie Wolf Graham, the <laughs> harbor master. When I used to live uh, uptown, then I moved down here, so I moved my skiffs and everything down down here, and I tied them up illegal, illegally at the dock, and I always used to fight with Augie Wolf Graham. He says to me one day, he says, I don't care what you, you and your boys do down on the mud flats down there, but if you embarrass me down State Street, I'll... I'll murder you, you know. But then I ended up being able to help him out with a with a problem that he had, and we became friends. And one day I got a mooring, <laughs> but it's a mooring right, as you say, right prime space, right in front of the BYC. I expect that I was Augie Wolf Graham's revenge, you know. <laughs> they were probably squabbling over who who had the right to it or who was going to get it next. And stuff. So he gave it to me. He gave it to the guy with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> that fixed everything, yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, and, uh, and Bill Bill Frost, I know he was, the two of you wrote it out when we put the, uh, put the dory in the water last week. Yeah. Uh, you've known him for... For a long time? Oh, it, he, when I first knew him, he was a little squirt. You can't believe it by looking at him now. He's a monster, right? Yeah. But, yeah, he lived, he's, his family lived across Pleasant Street from from my my family, who lived on Roland Street, or right, right by where the high school is. And I'd always have a boat or gill nets or something in the backyard that I'd be working on in the spring. And he'd come over and... and, and Every spring, he'd tackle me, and see if, and we'd we'd have to tussle, you know, see how see how tough he was, and I, I'd, I'd toy with him, I'd knock him down, and uh, make him eat grass, and uh, make him say uncle, and we'd then we'd have some fun. But uh, yeah, he's all he's my best helper and dory mate for all them years. But I knew I was really screwed one day when this thing came up the hill to my backyard and blotted out the sun. I says, oh, he smokes. He's turned into a monster over the, over, over the winter. I'm in trouble now. It's payback time. Oh, yeah, he got me good. Yep, how does the grass taste? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Say uncle. Okay, Billy. <laughs> good fun. So we've been friends for a long time. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I heard you did you uh you went to Woodstock? Did you go to Woodstock? Oh I did, yeah. Me and my underage girlfriend ran away to Woodstock with with a couple other people. Yeah. Yeah. We had a great time, got into all kinds of trouble. Oh, I can't believe that. Oh, yeah. who would? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Her dad was a searching for me to strangle me when we got back oh. and everything. Oh, it was terrible, but everybody survived. And yeah, but they had a good time out yeah. there. So, so we're sitting here on the, the hippie bench, it was called, and I, th I think that you've sat here before? Uh, him, him, him <laughs> cross, that is to say. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Had to meet here by 7.30 every night. You know? Oh. Yeah. Bring your 50 cents because we'd get somebody to get a bottle of wine. And then we'd go, go party and come back, hang on the bench some more. Oh. End, up at, end up at the King's Rook after a while and poor Frank Reagan and have to babysit us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we owe our life to him. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for uh, for talking to me today, and we'll probably uh, talk again and get some more stories. So. All right, kiddo, there's more at the store. Okay, great. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>